Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a black-white silver quill deck titled Silver Kill, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, because the deck features four copies of Killian Ink Duelist, the 2-mana two 2-2 two -two legendary human warlock, has lifelink and menace, and says spells we cast that target a creature cost two generic mana less to cast. So Killian is very synergistic with our Silver Quill command, which typically costs 4 mana for a rare sorcery that lets us choose two modes between target creature gets plus 3 plus 3 and gains flying until end of turn, return target creature card with mana value 2 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield, target player draws a card at the cost of 1 life, and finally target opponent sacrifices a creature. So as long as we're choosing the first mode, we can cast a Silver Quill command for just 2 mana with a Killian in play. The second mode, even though it targets the creature, doesn't work the same way with Killian, just as a side note. And then we also have two copies of Mavinda, Student's Advocate in the deck, a 3 mana 2 3 legendary bird advisor with flying, and for 0 mana we can cast a target instant or sorcery card from our graveyard this turn, and then if that spell doesn't target a creature we control we have to pay 8 additional mana on top of the casting cost. So Mavinda typically limits us to casting spells that target a creature, but that once again means that it also lets us get back Silver Quill Command out of the graveyard, so those also synergize very nicely. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, we've got plenty of Magecraft creatures from Strixhaven. So let's jump right into it here with our 1-drops, where we've got 4 copies of Clever Lumimancer in 01 with Magecraft, saying whenever we cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, the Lumimancer gets plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn. Then at 2 mana, we've got Clarion Spirit as a 2-2 Spirit, saying whenever we cast our second spell each turn, we get to make a 1-1 Flying Spirit token, so that also synergizes with our nice low curve and our various cantrip effects. And then Leonin Lightscribe is individually powerful, but also has great synergy with all the token makers in the deck, as a 2-2 creature with Magecraft, giving all our creatures plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. Then we've got our 4 copies of Killian, the full playset of Senchmore Witch as a 3 mana 3 2 human warlock with menace, and Ward, which makes the opponent pay 3 life if they want to target the witch with a spell or ability, and Magecraft generates a 1 1 pest token that when it dies gains us 1 life. So, alongside Clarion Spirit, another nice way to generate a few tokens, which we can then pump up with our Leonin Lightscribe. Then we've got our two copies of Mavinda, and then two copies of Extus Auric Overlord, a 4 mana 2 4 legendary human warlock with a double strike, and the Magecraft ability gets back a non legendary creature card from our graveyard to our hand, so it gives us access to a nice bit of recursion. We could technically play the Mardu Colored Triome to get access to Awaken the Blood Avatar, but I'll leave that up to you, but for now we're just playing a straight up black white version. And then taking a look at some of our non creature spells to enable Magecraft, we've got four copies piece of Defiant Strike as a 1 mana instant that gives target creature plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn, and we also get to draw a card, so also great for helping us double spell for Clarion Spirit. We've got 4 copies of a Guiding Voice, putting a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature, and also lets us learn, which is why we have our 7 sideboard cards here, including a copy of Academic Probation, Environmental Sciences to hit our land drops, a bit of removal with a reduced to memory and necrotic fumes, Inkling summoning if we want an extra creature, and then Expanded Anatomy also synergizes very nicely with Killian, as it will only cost us 1 mana to put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on target creature and give it Vigilance until end of turn, and then we can also get it back with Mavinda out of the graveyard, and then Mascot Exhibition if we have access to a ton of mana can generate 3 creatures for us. And then finally we also have two copies of A Lash of Malice as a 1 mana instant giving target creature plus 2, minus 2 until end of turn. So for the most part we will be using this as a removal spell for an opposing creature with 1 or 2 toughness, but we can also use it as a pump spell for our own creature if we just need to get in additional damage. And if we target a creature like Lumimancer or Leonin Lightscribe, the Magecraft trigger will resolve first, so they won't die to the minus 2 toughness. And because it can target our own creature it also means we can potentially get it back out of the graveyard with Mavinda, as long as it's targeting one of our creatures, also great with the double strike on Extus. And then the mana base includes 8 basic planes, 6 basic swamps, 4 of the black white pathway, and 4 of the new snarl dual land cycle. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, we'll have to find some black mana, but for now we can play Lumimancer and Clarion Spirit, so we'll try it. And then Lash of Malice we can also potentially get back with Mavinda.
opponent's got her own Lumimancer. So we will get to curve Spirit into Movinda at the very least. Second Lumimancer. And no attack, maybe saving their instant or sorcery for next turn. We'll just play Spirit and pass. If we can pick up a Swamp next turn, we could go Clarion Spirit into Lash and make two Spirit tokens, which would be quite effective. There's the Defiant Strike. Let's see if they have another Magecraft Enabler. A guiding Voice. Alright, so we're taking at least 10 damage. And another 1 mana spell with the Wings of the Cosmos, so we're taking 15. Yeah, that works. Sadly, no black mana. So, probably means I play Mavinda. Spirit isn't jumping, but maybe the Lumimancer is. And Mavinda can block a 2 3 Lumimancer. Opponent's got her own Mavinda. So that's going to be problematic. They could have decided to pump the other Lumimancer, because now I can just take four down to one. Alright, Defiant Strike, so probably go Spirit Defiant Strike here. And then I have to do it now if we want to get value for more Calarian Spirits. And then I could use another Defiant Strike out of the graveyard if I wanted to. Could attack with all and then use Mavinda if our opponent blocks. And if not, we'll save the Defiant Strike for next turn to maybe enable Clarion Spirit again. Hopefully finding black mana. Can be a guiding voice. So it means I won't be able to trade for an opposing creature using Defiant Strike. But we can triple chump. And that does potentially leave the opponent exposed on the way back. Alright, there's my black mana. So I can cast at least two spells. Can pump Mavinda. So that's four, five, six, seven, plus four is eleven, so they should be dead here. Would have played the Defiant Strike first if we didn't have guaranteed lethal in case we did find something like Light Scribe to pump up the team. Alright, so close game here, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. 
double Defiance Strike plays nicely alongside both Clarion Spirit and Movenda. Opponent on blue red. So we will need a third land, but Guiding Voice can also help us with that. So, let's see, if I Guiding Voice for the lesson that searches a land, I still wouldn't be able to cast it, so I could also Guiding Voice and then go for the discard draw, although at that point I might be better off casting Defiant Strike. Putting a counter on Spirit does mean that it survives a 2 damage burn spell. So there's that advantage as well. So I think I do go for Guiding Voice. And then... Yeah, I think I go for the discard, since I really need a land right now. Get rid of the Sedgemore Witch. So three mana for the opponents. And it's going to be a second Sprite Dragon into Infuriates. Opponent hits us for 7. And this is great. So we'll go Clarion Spirit, Defiant Strike. And then I'm expecting my 2-2 Spirit to die here. Riddle form grows the Sprite Dragons. Alright, double Riddle form. So, can we kill our opponents? They're at 13. Let's say next turn we go Light Scribe Defiant Strike. That's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, we only get there if we draw into another 1 mana instant or sorcery. But at the same time, I don't expect my opponent to burn me out. So we can take it, and then we can always make more spirits next turn. So, yeah, go Light Scribe into Defiant Strike, probably leaving up a white mana. Alright, we do not quite have lethal. So I think that means we need to keep both our spirits back. And then try to survive this next turn. And then Mavinda can cast something out of the graveyard. So we're not dead to a single removal spell on a spirit token, but two of them will do it. Or a removal spell plus a pump spell. So most combinations of two non-creature spells will kill us here. It's going to be a Stormwing Entity for 5 mana, so Riddle Form stays back. And our opponent explodes, so... Yeah, I guess they were not in a great spot, and next turn Movinda was definitely going to end the game for us. So close one here against blue-red, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Turn 1 Lumamancer, turn 2 Spirit, and on turn 3 we can go Spirit plus Guiding Voice to make two Spirit tokens and enable Magecraft. Opponents with a Merchant, discarding Dragon's Approach, alright. Recently featured a Dragon's Approach deck on Channel Fireball that you can check out. So the opponent's goal is to get a Velomachus in play, most likely. And try and burn us out. So getting some Spirit tokens here is quite valuable. And then we'll put the counter on... Doesn't matter too much if our opponent has Storm's Wrath. It's going to be problematic either way. And then... I could get something like... Reduce to Memory or Necrotic Fumes to answer Velomachus if it eventually enters the battlefields. Anything to beat Storm's Wrath. 
I guess had I put the counter on Clarion Spirits, Anatomy could have saved a Clarion Spirit from the 4 damage. Uh, I guess we'll go with Necrotic Fumes here. And then we'll have to wait and see if we have enough pressure in play already, or if we feel pressured into playing Exodus. Although this could be a nice follow-up to a Sweeper. So yeah, maybe I should have gone with Counter on Spirits, and then next turn expanded Anatomy on Spirit to make it a 5-5. So it doesn't die to Storm's Wrath. Leonin Lightscribe. Interesting draw. So our opponent currently has four approaches in the graveyard, so I think we leave a spirit back. And just hit like this. And then probably no real reason to commit anything else. And there's a Storm's Wrath. So now we can play, I guess, Spirit into Light Scribe is fine. There's the approach getting Velomachus. And we've got to hope it doesn't hit another Storm's Wrath. Well, it hit another Storm's Wrath. So we're down to 9, and currently can't cast our Necrotic Fumes. Can play Exodus. But next turn we're likely taking lethal. So if they have another approach in hand, we're dead. And there we go, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Two creatures, a few ways to enable Magecraft. And Silvercoil Command, especially nice if we pick up Killian. Opponent on Sultai. And a Quandrox Apprentice we can take out with a Lash of Malice. And we can cast a Guiding Voice as well. So... What do we search up with Guiding Voice is the question. Inkling Summoning seems fine here as an extra threat that also enables Magecraft. Hit for 11. Opponent passes with 3 mana up. Well, um, probably still go with a uh, summoning here. Can also cast Silver Quill Command, but even if my summoning gets countered, we still enable Magecraft. Hit for 7. Maybe could have sequenced my lands better in case of a bounce spell. Yes, I could have replayed the Lumimancer here for single white. So your opponent bounced and then shuffled their 2 drop back. Such more which we can make the opponent sacrifice and that should be game. with a bit of damage to spare. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Turn two Clarion Spirits, then probably turn three Sedgemore Witch to set up two spells in the same turn and Magecraft. 
opponent with a mountain. And they did seem to have a pause with one mana, so could be maybe a spike field hazard as we see it played tapped here. Alright, we're prepared to play a grindy game with Extus, so we don't really mind if our opponent spends a bit of removal on Clarion Spirit. And a Rada. So I could go Light Scribe into Guiding Voice and then next turn Mavinda into Replay Guiding Voice, although we do miss out on a bunch of Magecraft triggers in the meantime. So I think I still play the Witch. And then next turn perhaps I can go Light Scribe into Guiding Voice. Or we can just play Extus. Is your opponent on the red green landfall deck perhaps? Gets to fight my spirit for free. Lumamancer the draw. Yeah, I don't hate playing Extus here to set up getting back Clarion Spirits. Alternatively, we would go Light Scribe Lumamancer Guiding Voice. Although I don't get to benefit from the Magecraft triggers on offense as much. It's an interesting spot. Yeah, we'll uh, hit for three and play Extus. Arada gets two counters. And then especially putting a plus one counter on Extus, which has double strike, is going to be very impactful. Brushfire Elemental, tanks with both, we'll take it. And the land 5. So... I can play Light Scribe, play Guiding Voice, get back Clarion Spirits, play Clarion Spirits. That seems pretty good. There's no way we can trigger the Clarion Spirit here since it's never going to be the second spell. And which lesson do we want to get? Maybe a removal spell, like Necrotic Fumes. Sure. And then we don't mind chumping Rada with her pest. Pickaxe on the elemental. Alright. I guess we might be dead to an ember cleave. There's no way we can block the elemental. But our opponent concedes. Alright, sweet. We would have gained one life before dying to the ember cleave because of first strike damage, but yeah, assuming no ember cleave, we should be able to survive an attack back for lethal next turn. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. First creature on turn 3 is a little on the slow side, but which can quickly make up for it. And a Lumimancer. Alright, so turn 3 Witch, and then turn 4 maybe play a second Witch before casting our first instant or sorcery. And then probably one double white facing a Mutate deck. At least if they try to bounce or witch, they'll have to pay 3 life. Would still be annoying. It's gonna be a C-Octopus mutated. 
Could consider jumping with a Lumimancer. Although next turn we should be able to generate some pests at least that can jump instead. That opponent stays back, in which case I think I just play another Witch. Or we could Defiant Strike and then hope to draw a land, play Witch. Is that better? It's definitely a consideration. Sure. Because I do want to hit my land drop. Picked up a Killian instead, which is still a fine play. So now, Pest could trump Symbiote if they mutate something on top. And the Menace creatures help us go wide. And Gem Racer doesn't have any artifacts or enchantments to destroy, at least. It does trample, so now jumping with the Pest is less appealing. Their opponent seems to be missing double green since they had to use their food token and the goose. Gets rid of Asterix, so their hand is land light, but there's no shortage of expensive and powerful cards. Gem Racer attacks, we'll take it. Opponent gets to draw. There's a second green source. And a Swarm Shambler. Ooh, Leonin Light Scribe. That seems good. Tank with all. And we're gonna Defiant Strike again here. One is at four. And next turn we should be able to close out the game with Guiding Voice to enable Magecraft once again. Yeah, the combination of Light Scribe plus Sedgemore Witch is a nice one too. If we draw a Silver Quill Command we can cast it for two mana. Which would also be very effective. Just take four. No sense in jumping when they trample. So they need something like Castle Garenbrig into Auspicious Sterex Mutated and then get lucky with which permanents they hit. But yeah, even that sequence probably wouldn't save them. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Lumancer into Double Light Scribe with a Silver Quill command to enable Magecraft. Hopefully pick up some other 1-mana instants or sorceries. Swarm Shambler, so a plus 1 counter deck. Well, we're gonna have a lot of Magecraft triggers on turn 4, hopefully. Alright, Clarion Spirits, good draw as well. Not really interested in trading Light Scribe for a Swarm Shambler, so we'll just pass. A 1 mana cantrip would let us go Light Scribe into Double Magecraft from Light Scribe. So that would be our best draw. Another command, so... Alright, I'm just gonna play Light Scribe and pass. But now any land that enters untapped, which is any land except three more Snarls, will let us play Silver Quill Command. Can give one of our creatures flying, make the opponent sacrifice. Or we can draw and make the opponent sacrifice, maybe that's better. 
Well, we had to draw the Snarl. Alright, so great start, but now things are slowing down a bit, sadly. Now a 4-4 Swarm Shambler can maybe set up some profitable blocks. Alright, so time for command. And uh, definitely make the opponent sacrifice. And then probably just draw. Giving something plus three and flying. I guess I could fly the Clarion Spirits. But if we pick up another one mana spell, that's going to be even better here. So target a player. That's me. Just another Clarion Spirit. So they can eat one of my four powered creatures with Swarm Shambler here. I think we still send a team. And then Command can get back a Light Scribe that dies here. If we had a one mana instant, this would be an absolute blowout if they try and set up any block, but they might not have a choice. They could try to eat both my Light Scribes. But then they're still taking 12 plus 3 is 15. Alright, opponent falls to one and just eats the single light scribe. I don't think they can kill me on the way back here. Although, who knows? They've got 10 power, 5 mana potentially. Which is going to be a great hench. Into Gnarled Colony, giving their creatures with plus one counters trample. Right, land means I can go spirit into another command. And then they do still have a reach creature, so flying doesn't make a huge difference. Um, also, I mentioned they're just dead here to sacrifice and return a creature. Still taking at least five. So yeah, Silver Quill Command gives the deck a nice bit of late game that it otherwise wouldn't have. Getting back Clarion Spirit and Light Scribe can be incredibly valuable. But this game also showcased the importance of having those one mana Magecraft enablers, because they can make a huge difference to our damage output if we have some Magecraft creatures in play. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.